PFM across the country. That's a rare disease that can be confused with polio, and it can cause paralysis. Two cases of those, or two of those cases, I should say, are here in Wisconsin. So we wanted to ask our medical expert, Dr. Mandira Mera, whether we should be concerned about all of this. Dr. Mera, good morning. Good morning. So more than 100 cases being investigated as possibly linked to all of this. I mean, we should start this conversation out by saying this is a rare condition, correct? Correct, correct. So no reason for immediate panic. Yeah. However, as a parent, when you hear something like this, it can be very scary. Like we were talking about earlier, the average age is four. Mm -hmm. About 90% of cases happen in under 18. Wow. So again, not really a common adult population uh, type of disease, but what we're looking at is an acute, uh, basically flaccid paralysis. And so what often starts off, things that parents should look for, what often starts off as sort of an acute respiratory illness, maybe mm -hmm. a viral illness, will suddenly present with uh, children having arm and leg weakness, sometimes facial weakness, the really, really scary scary thing, of course, is diaphragm weakness, which, which can result in being uh, ventilator dependent and mm -hmm. you won't be able to breathe on your own. Now, a lot of patients are making a full recovery with some residual weakness, but it's really mysterious here. It's been going on for a number of years, but like you said, it is rare. Uh, we think that maybe things like West Nile virus, enteroviruses, some adenoviruses, maybe the initial presenting virus that then makes this autoimmune process happen where the spinal cord basically begins to attack itself. The body says, hold on, something's not right here. So if a par as a parent you notice any of these symptoms, that suddenly your child is weak and can't breathe or has a facial droop, definitely seek medical attention. A really scary thing also is that we don't have a cure. We don't really right. have a great treatment out there. We have lots of theories and we have great supportive care, but definitely to seek medical attention quickly. Because it's amazing that we're comparing this to polio. I mean, that's a, a disease that we haven't heard about, you know, for decades being a problem. So this right. could be, I mean, I, I can't imagine watching a kiddo go through this and just not understanding. And not and not knowing sort of the trajectory and what, sure. where we're going here. The nice thing is that so far the CDC has investigated uh, 30 to 60 cases in the U.S. None have tested positive for polio. So okay. there's no fear for, you know, no cry for alarm that, oh my God, polio's back. We've right. done a great job eradicating it. Vaccines did their job. I think advice to parents is to, of course, keep your kids vaccinated, proper hand hygiene if kids are sick, keep them home from school, and then, of course, seek immediate medical attention if you notice any kind mm -hmm. of weakness, paralysis, those sorts of symptoms. Pretty scary. We are also talking this morning about a report by the FDA that yeah. says hundreds of supplements have unlisted and unapproved ingredients in them. Is yes. that something we should be concerned about? This is definitely something to take pause and think about because over half of us, half of Americans, are taking some kind of supplement, some kind of over the counter. Uh, nutrient type pill and we'd say well this is great for us right mm -hmm. uh, we see the commercials that they promise to do amazing things like boost muscles and lose weight and, and those sorts of things unfortunately the testing has shown from the FDA that many of these uh, supplements and nutrients don't have the approved ingredients. Now this is very concerning because of course many of us have medical conditions or we're on different types of medications or we may be doing harm to our body because we don't know these supplements have other active ingredients mm -hmm. in them. Now of course a lot of you might be at home thinking well how is this FDA approved then? How are these available on the market and over the counter? There is a clause that in 1994 that said that basically supplements do not need to be FDA approved pre-marketing or pr before they hit the market. Unlike most pharmaceuticals given to you by your, um, by your physician that are prescribed, those have to go through, of course, stringent testing and research and all these sorts of things. So mm -hmm. the FDA is kind of limited here because they can really only do post-market testing. So, of course, talk to your doctor, be aware of any side effects that may be associated with these things, and take them with caution. Some good stuff to remember next time you buy those fish oil pills. Absolutely. Right. Dr. Mara, thanks so much for joining us this Great morning. Great to be here.